Welcome to my home country, Australia. Sounds like I'm trying to do an accent because I think I've pretty much lost it. You got an accent now, man, too. Australia is the home of Vegemite, Tim Tams, kangaroos, and this guy. I spent about the first 25 years of my life living in Australia. Just over a decade ago, I started a little rink-a-dink YouTube channel where I made a video series called The Game Quest, where I would go around and collect video games. My channel has changed a lot since then. I've changed a lot since since then, and I haven't been back home in a long time, but I'm finally visiting. I need to game hunt in Australia in 2024. I have no idea what to expect. Obviously, I'm mostly going to be looking for Switch stuff, but again, I grew up here. All of the nostalgia I have for video games or just the 90s in general were here. I don't know what I'll find from my childhood that I might want to pick up and own now. So. Kim and I are here in Australia and ready to look for games and drink a ton of coffee. The coffee here is incredible and I've already had so much. One thing I want to say, getting here is a nightmare, which is why I don't do it much anymore. The flight that we took was from Newark, New Jersey to Singapore. That was 19 hours just for that one flight. It is literally the longest flight you can do in the world because any longer is unethical. Speaking of Singapore airport though, I didn't expect to find a bunch of Nintendo stuff at this airport. With a giant Mario statue, a ton of Nintendo games. They only had, you know, the banger titles. They had, they had nothing weird and wacky. Now I'm taking a lot of things on this trip to Australia. Here in my travel bag, I've got my Switch, my Steam Deck, my laptop, my XR glasses. There's not a lot of room left. So when it comes to big bulky headphones, I would rather take a pair of earbuds. Luckily, this video is sponsored by Raycon, but I'm not kidding at all. I was so excited to take these on the trip because because this is their new model that finally has noise canceling. And if you don't know why that's awesome on a plane, try going on a plane. <laughs> they have this low hum. So to cancel out that noise, oh, a crying baby on the plane? I can't hear it. I have noise cancellation. Are we going down? Is the pilot screaming, Brace for impact? I don't know. I can't hear a word that guy say. <laughs> Heaven sent. And yeah, you've probably heard me talk about Raycon a lot over the last few years, about how they have amazing quality and they start at half the price of other premium audio brands, the fact they've sold over 3 million units to satisfied customers, and so much more. But there's never been a better time to grab a pair. Because as I said, this is the brand new everyday earbud model. Now they have a multi-point connection ability thing, which allows you to connect to two devices at once. That means if I want to connect to my Switch and play some Smash, while at the same time be connected to my phone in case I want to listen to some H3 podcast. Better believe I can do that. You can listen to them when you're going on a run, in the gym. It doesn't matter how much you shake your head, they're not going to fall out. It is better than ever a good time to to grab a pair and there's also a 30 day money back guarantee if for whatever reason you're not satisfied so if you want to help out why don't you click the link in the description box below or go to buyraycon.com forward slash beat em ups and get 15% off and free shipping i have a pimple on my head has nothing to do with anything but it's annoying me in the all right we just flew for like 35 hours. I feel like crap. The first video game store we're visiting is here in Perth and it's called Retro Collect. I'm gonna go in and collect retro. <laughs> <laughs> this one's tucked away on a really cute street near the city. It's a smaller store, but they have a lot of really cool vintage stuff, specifically all in their window display area. One of the first things I'm instantly drawn to are these Digimon Tamagotchis. I used to love these when I was a kid. And then eventually upgrading to the D3 version, which they have both of those versions in this store. And I saw them when I went to Japan. I see them in America 
got all the time and they're always very expensive. But again, the stuff in this store, they're more worth their price to me because it's more nostalgic. This store also had a ton of Game & Watches. I'm on the lookout for Game Boys while I'm here. Another nostalgic thing from my childhood, but also the Game Boy Light. Bob told me to look out for it because it didn't get released in America. I would love to have a complete inbox PAL version of Ocarina of Time but that's $350, which is probably completely a fair price. Australia is more expensive when it, or oh, power region is more expensive mm -hmm. with video games. I am looking at the Nintendo Switch selection this store has, and it's very small. There's nothing here that I need or want. But one thing I am noticing about the Switch games in Australia is interestingly, the spines of the Switch games, it's like the Wild West out here. In America, all the spines are uniform, but the Switch games in Australia seem to have a little bit more freedom. Also, all of the game titles have been centered to the middle of the spine. This is about as retro as this channel has got in a very long time, but I am seeing a Maxi 15 pack for the NES. I didn't have many NES games, and this was a lifesaver because it had 15 games on one cartridge. Menace Beach is so much fun. It's essentially Sunday fun day, but a lot less religious. I even loved playing Chiller on this thing, even though I didn't have a light gun and I just had to use a regular NES controller, which made it way harder. And don't even get me started on dudes with attitudes. I think I'm gonna have to get this. This is one of the few NES games <laughs> I actually had when I was a kid. Seeing it here for only 40 bucks with the transfer of it being about 50% more in Australia to US is probably around $30. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna get this. Out the front of his store, I saw a, what I think is a bit sun faded Ocarina Edition. I've never seen this before. It was Ocarina of Time 3D. Oh, this okay. just only has the, the Ocarina. Ocarina in it. Oh, um, okay. I've never seen that before. Yeah, it was a exclusive uh, Australian special edition of the game. That's really cool. I wish it was complete. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it, I could have just bought the Ocarina of Time 3DS game separately. So looking back, I kind of wish I bought this. So I can't stop thinking about this Digivice. This is the one I remembered really loving as a kid. They have $400 on it. But I keep looking at this thing and eventually the guy working there was like, hey, I can get that out for you. We can test it, see if it works. Yeah, it works. Of course it does. He said he could do 330 Australian. So now we're looking at about 250 American. All right, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I did not expect to spend $300 in there, but uh, I did. I got my Maxi 15 games and I, I got a Digivice. I know it's a lot, but I think it's actually not a bad deal. And getting one from my own country means a lot more to me than if I got one in America. Can you smell the copium? Is it that obvious? <laughs> Not too far away from Retro Collect, there's another retro game store called Beyond Retro. And the mall thing that it's in actually reminded us of the Mandorakes from Japan. Just these big buildings with a ton of independently owned storefronts inside. This store was pretty big and they had floor to ceiling stacked video games, as well as a ton of figures and consoles and collectibles and other cool stuff. They actually had a lot of cool Switch stuff, including this Dead Cells, Castlevania box. It sounded like they imported a lot of limited run stuff over too. Apparently limited run didn't offer their product in Australia easily. Maybe the shipping was really expensive. Either way, limited run stuff is quite valuable here. I had them pull out a game called Mato Anomalies. The box art looked really good, but when I looked up reviews for the game, they were pretty average. But I want to make sure that I'm buying games that I actually want to play. It's really pretty. Look at it. It's got like little pine cones and stuff on it. Yeah, it's cute. It's cute. Go to a game store, buy a candle. Mm. I ended up getting into a conversation with one of the people that worked here who was telling me about all the video game stores are closing down or have closed down, including stores like Game Traders. Back when I used to live in Adelaide, the two big chain stores were EB Games, which is our GameStop, and Game Traders, which was a buy new and used, sell, trade in chain. And apparently all of those have closed down. And now we only have really EB Games left. 
And if you want to look at the mom and pop independently owned ones here in Perth, there's these four stores that I found, which is such a shame because I feel like more than ever, people want to buy video games. People are collecting video games. So I'm not sure why all these big chains are closing down other than online ordering, really just destroying mom and pop stores. It's getting late in the day and both the other video game stores I wanted to visit have already closed. And tomorrow, we already have a whole day planned over on Rotnest Island, which is about a 25, 30 minute ferry ride over from the shore of Perth to this tiny little island. You won't find any video games here, but what you will find is arguably the cutest little marsupial rat thing that you'll ever see, a coworker. We rented bikes, we rode around the whole island, we stopped at cafes and beaches and saw a sunken ship looking thing. This is peak Australia right here. I haven't had one of these in a long time. There he is. Uh -oh. The outlaw, the red-nosed bandit. You should give him some. We won't like it. The beaches here, by the way, and when I say here, I just mean Australia, are the best in the world. Gorgeous blue water, beautiful sand, and the ones around this island were no exception. And then not to mention, there were quokkas everywhere. Little guys that would come up to us and one of them put his little paw on me and you're not supposed to pet them. I gave him a cheeky little one. Don't tell the government. It's called Rottenness Island. I highly recommend it. Any true blue Aussie, or at least one that's in the video game collecting, will tell you a great place to go if you want to find a good deal on a video game, or a lawnmower, or a leaf blower, or a TV, are uh, cash cashies, or cash converters. This is classic for a cashies. You'll have the best retro game store right next to fishing supplies. And I was surprised to see a ROG Ally being sold for $899, but they had some Switch stuff, some Wii U stuff, some old classic N64 games. Nothing that's really jumping out to me. Next, we drove over to a mall that had an EB Games. This EB Games is actually pretty huge. Looking at the prices here is kind of blowing my mind. So many of these games seem wildly overpriced compared to their American counterparts. The first game I'm seeing at this EB Games that I've never seen before is Slave Zero X. I looked up reviews online and they were very positive the game looks sick. So having never seen it before, I assumed, oh, this didn't release in America. So I thought, this is Australian only. What a perfect game to buy while I'm here. I later found out that my phone was only showing me the Australian places to buy the game because it geolocated me to Australia and thought I was trying to buy the game within Australia. This did come out very recently in America too. Since I realized what was happening, I stopped making that mistake. I am legitimately seeing some games here though that have physical releases in Australia that don't have physical releases in America. I found two more that didn't come out in a, in America. Tie the Tasmanian Tiger and Two Point Hospital Jumbo Edition. I mean, I'm in Australia. I gotta get this one. <laughs> Something I noticed, all of the Pokemon games have a cool little Pokeball or emblem next to their titles. I think they don't do that in America because there's really strict rules as to what you can do with the spines. I also found a game here called Morbid The Lords of Aya. What appealed to me was the gameplay screenshots on the back. It looks almost like Witcher. I was mostly just intrigued by how good this game actually looks and does it look that good when you actually play it on the Switch. I also found a game called Skabama Snowfall. This one doesn't have a physical in America. I was right about this one. And again, this game looks beautiful. I was just looking at the box art on the back and all these really gorgeous screenshots. This game also just looks like a mystical adventure that I would enjoy. Yeah, I'm gonna pick up all three of these. After EB Games, I need coffee. I wasn't into coffee when I used to live here, and I didn't know that apparently we have incredible coffee in Australia. I couldn't find a bad cup. I went to a different coffee place every single day. Whether it was a small hole in the wall that specialized in coffee or a cafe that did breakfast and coffee, it didn't matter. Everything came out looking picture perfect and tasting incredible. If you're going to Australia, get a heckin' cup of coffee. Before we leave Perth, I wanted to film some of my grandparents 
friends gaming garage. My uncle was really big into video games. He had an NES and a Super Nintendo, which is where I played a lot of the NES and Super Nintendo games that I didn't have growing up. I remember always playing NBA Jam when I went over his house. But also, he had a PC game wall. I swear before collecting games was even a thing. And that's actually where my love for point and clicks and Monkey Island specifically came from. Since moving to Perth, they took all those games with them and they're just out in the garage now. I even found the Maxi 15 pack that I had. I didn't know he had it too. I really wish I could steal some of these, but they are my uncles. So I have to leave them here. <laughs> Our time in Perth has come to an end. I gave my grandparents a very, very teary-eyed goodbye. Last time I saw them, it was very emotional. This time was very emotional. I love my grandparents so much, but I do have to go over to Adelaide. I got to see my brother and sister. I got to see all the friends I grew up with, and I got to look for video games. One of the first places we hit up is somewhere that I haven't forgotten about. All you Australians yelling at me when I mentioned Cashies and didn't mention JB Hi-Fi. I love me some JB Hi-Fi. It's essentially Australia's Best Buy. Something I always loved about the video game sections and the movie sections, store employees would write these little reviews and rate their favorite movies or video games. So you got these little recommendations from crew and staff when you were shopping. This game is awesome and I didn't know it had a physical, but I am not spending $70 to get it. I'm not seeing any video games I need, but they have the Sora Amiibo. I've been looking for this guy in America for weeks. <laughs> this is the first time I've actually seen it in person. Now here is where I started to notice a phenomenon. They do have a lot of physical games on the shelf of games I didn't expect to see physicals for, like Ollie Ollie World. I actually almost bought this because it's only $30 and then I saw that. So many of these games are download code only. I would really get upset if I bought one of these, got home and then found out. Look out for this. Something I realized while we were walking around this JB Hi-Fi, the new Paper Mario Thousand Year Door Remaster has released since I've been here. So I'm not gonna get a chance to even play this game for over a week until I get home. This JB Hi-Fi didn't really have anything I wanted, but there's one in the city. Now Adelaide, it's Australia's biggest, littlest city. There's only about a million of us here. There's essentially one long strip of stores that you can go to. It's called Rundle Mall. And the main reason we would go is for a store called Shin Tokyo. Growing up in Adelaide like 10, 15 years ago, we didn't really have many options for cool things. My friends and I would drive 45 minutes to this store, Shin Tokyo, which was before I even realized how cool Tokyo itself was. This is a slice of Japan. All these imported games that you can't get anywhere else, well, outside of Adelaide. They have all these cool figures. They have manga, toys, plushies. They have blind boxes. And this was all at a time 15 years ago before I even knew what any of that stuff was or how cool any of it was. I just came here and bought video games, but now, I'm also probably just gonna buy video games. After now being to Japan, I totally get what this store is going for. It just feels like one of these little shops that we would visit in Japan. So something that this store does that I don't think any other place does in Australia that I know of is memberships. And then everything in the store gets a reduced price. Having said that, it does feel very artificial. It almost seems like they jack the prices up on everything and then the member price is just the normal price. But the best part about this store when it comes to video games is they import from everywhere. I had never even heard or seen some of these games before. Void? This game looked really cool, but it was $80. They had a physical of Loop Hero. Loop Hero, it's great. It's a gem and I love it. I can't bring myself to spend 60 on this. Not when I already have it. I was very tempted to buy this Made in Abyss. It just looks like a fun game that I would like. After looking up reviews of all of these games, the one that seemed to be the most positive was Mortal Shell. I had never seen this game before. The visuals look stunning. I really just want to see how this actually looks and plays on the Switch and with its really high positive reviews, I figured it was one worth taking a shot at. I'm also so tempted to get this Slime Rancher physical. Mostly I want this for the box art. This has to be the prettiest box art of any Switch game, but again, I already have the game digitally and I just don't think it's worth $60. 
I never really used to be into the figures, the stuffies, the manga, even the anime. So being back here, I appreciate this store so much more than before. So I'm just getting this one game and a couple extra things I'm grabbing for my sister and Kim. I assumed I just wasn't gonna get my member discount because I am a member of Shin Tokyo. But when I told him I didn't have my member card, he's asked for my name and I was like, I'll give it a shot. I'm still in the system. This blew my mind. I got my member discount. So we've been in Australia for about a week and a half now and I've noticed after going into JB Hi-Fi and EB Games and anywhere that sells games, it's very much the same selection everywhere I go. It's all the same stuff. I think I've bought pretty much everything that I'm gonna find. It's a sports card world. Sounds not exciting, but it actually is. So you have a ton of Pokemon cards, Yu-Gi-Oh cards, and this store actually was a big reason why my friends and I used to even come to the city. Michael and I would always look at the Yu-Gi-Oh cards, boxes of cards that we'd go home and open them all and then be disappointed in what we bought. It also used to be next to a really cool comic book store that's gone now, so. Mm. But again, it was nice and nostalgic just being back in this little section of shops and remembering how many times I came here as a kid. Later that night, as we were driving home, Kim and I found a cat. It's not relevant to this video at all, but it was the sweetest cat. She came over to me and she wanted pets. Also, if you ever visit South Australia specifically, make sure to get yourself a Farmer's Union iced coffee, not a sponsor. You know, on this trip, I've gone to a lot of different coffee places, but in South South Australia, there's something called Farmer's Union Iced Coffee, and I crave it every time I come here. I don't know how it's only available in a state of about a million people when it's this good, but it's the best iced coffee you'll ever have. Because <sighs> it's a Farmer's Union Iced Coffee, or it's nothing. That's the slogan. <laughs> there are a lot of things about Australia that I miss, which is why I stocked up while I was there. Fruit chocks? What do you know about those? Also, shapes. They're like uh, little biscuits. I don't know how you guys don't have pods here. They're like a cookie shell with chocolate on top, and then they stuff the inside with like different collaborations. This one's Snickers. They're always better than the actual candies that they're collaborating with. Like this is actually better than a Snickers. It's so good. This is one of them like an acquired taste. I love it. Kim hates it. It's a Turkish delight. This is the only one I've opened so far because I needed that in me. Australian snacks are just better. I don't know what to tell you. There were some other places Kim and I tried to look for games. Uh, we went to a Target. Actually, Target is where I saw the most of these download code only games. NBA 2K24, Just Dance, Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. But the one that's blowing my mind the most is they have Immortals Phoenix Rising here. Download code only. That's definitely physical home in America. But I was just absolutely blown away by this. Another good chunk of my childhood was K-Zone magazines. I can't believe they still make K-Zones. Would have figured these would have gone out of business so long ago. But when I was a kid, I wanted these every single month or week or whatever. It always came with a little toy of some kind. It always had gaming stuff in it. <laughs> this one has Pokemon. I wish this one wasn't Garfield. I know, you don't like Garfield. I'm not sure who is still making K-Zone in 2024, but I was really surprised to see that it was still a thing. Oh, so sure enough, my poster for this one's going to be Garfield. But I mean, even look at what's around the Garfield. It's Splatoon 3. Oh yeah, every month that you could send in art, they're highlighting people's pets. I'm not even kidding, I'm a little teary-eyed. That's a K-Zone. A lot of people ask me very often, what do I miss most about living in Australia? My friends, my family, of course. I miss the beach, that's number one. The quality of the food, the fresh, Freshness, all of that is better in Australia, but there isn't a kind of food I miss other than gyroses. Not gyros, gyros. I don't even know how to explain the joys of a gyros. It's meat on a spit that's shaved off, thrown into a pita bread wrap, tomato and lettuce and all that good stuff. And it's fully wrapped like a burrito, but it has a certain flavor that can't be beat. And this is a religious experience for me right now. <laughs> and there's one place in Adelaide that is king, literally. Literally, and that's Yeros King. It's on Junk Food Corner. This was the one thing I was craving. I 
that tell you? Sitting here with Kim on Hallett Cove Beach, watching the sunset while eating a gyros. Might have been my second favorite moment of the trip next to the time that Kim and I spent on Rottnest Island. And Kim hated the gyros. But all that meant was I got two. <laughs> Leaving Adelaide City, I drove out intentionally a weird way so that I could pass the Team Cherry building. Hey, you know Hollow Knight? We just drove past the building where it was made. Yeah, Hollow Knight was made in my hometown. So <laughs> we did one good thing. Me. <laughs> and also Hollow Knight. There is still so much to do in Adelaide. On the weekend, I want to do all of the flea markets. Also, on Saturday, there is a giant toy fair. On top of that, on Friday, I'm meeting up with Chris and we're going video game hunting to all of my favorite Adelaide stores that we used to go to. So much stuff, in fact. I can't even cram it all into one episode and I'm gonna have to do a part two. So if you enjoyed this episode and me being back in my home town hunting for games like comment and subscribe because i have another episode coming very soon